Hi, welcome back to the workshop. My name's Graham, of course, even with a little bit shaved off the side, so I should be familiar to most of you. We're here today to actually put the hand chiver offset calculator through its paces by calculating and then bending offsets in tube. So I hope you enjoy the video. And let's go over to the board. The first calculation I'm going to show you all is called the simple offset. Basically an offset used with your standard bend then measure technique which everyone's familiar with. Up on our whiteboard we have a sketch of an offset of 120 millimetres. We have a lead in of 200 millimetres and we have a cut off length at the end of 150 millimetres. So basically this technique assumes that this angle has already been bent. The angle we're using today is 55 degrees because 55 degrees isn't often found on your charts and uh, I'd actually have to look up the calculation for that, uh, for that angle. So if we go to the simple offset and we put in our bend angle of 55 degrees and we put in our offset of 120 millimetres. Click done. It tells me that the measurement between this point here and this point here is 146. It also gives me another measurement down here called the run measurement. So if I need to work out positioning, I know what that distance is. So I could move this and adjust this because I know this distance, I know that distance, and I know this distance. So it just makes it easier for working out a position. So let's go and bend this up and uh, we'll verify this offset on a piece of tube up on this drawing which is to scale. The first thing I'm going to do is measure the distance to my first angle which is 200 millimetre as per the drawing up on the board. Place the mark, the ruler on your job, mark the 200 millimetre point, circle your tube with the line as per normal procedure, try and keep it as parallel to the tube as possible. Accuracy is quite important, especially when we get into the more advanced techniques. I also put on the tube the angle that I'm bending to. In this instance, it's 55 degrees. Now let's place this in the bender and make this first bend. Now grab your trusty benders, set them up, holding them correctly of course. Set up your tube inside your benders roughly and just lightly clamp. Bring the roll support down and then just line up the mark on our tube with the 55 degree mark on your roll support. That's right, there isn't a 55 degree mark on my roll support. But there is a 45 and a 60 degree mark on my roll support. So all I've done is put a temporary mark between those two marks at the two thirds to show the 55 degree mark. So I'm just going to line that up with that, clamp it down and do my first bend. I've also marked the 55 degree mark on the die so I know where to bend it to. And there's our first bend. Okay, according to the calculation my measured length is 146 millimetres to the next bend position. So I'll grab my trusty rulers and I will measure 146 millimetres from the centre of the tube, not the outside, not the inside, always the centre of the tube for all tubing calculations. And I'll place a mark at 146 millimetres. Again, place the tube in the benders, roughly aligned, bring down your sock roll support. Okay, we've completed our second bend and cut off the tube by measuring it to 150 millimetres. Let's take it across the board and have a look and make sure it's accurate. Placing it against the board, just showing you that she is 
incredibly accurate. Certainly within a half a millimeter. Angle is correct, offset is correct, leading is correct, cutoff mark is correct. And basically, that's all there is to the simple offset. The predictive offset works out the length between the two marks based on your offset, but taking into account the offset creep or gain of the angle you're bending to. So if we go to the predictive offset, and we put in our bend angle of 55 degrees again, our offset of 120 millimetres again, we get a measure to mark of 143 millimetres as opposed to 146. This is because the offset creep of this bend is actually 3.1 millimetres, and it takes that into account. So what this is telling me to do is to make this length 200 as per the lead-in, this length 143, and this length will of course be 150 millimetres to the cutoff. Now, very important, this is your line of travel or your primary tube length. This is the line of travel too, so this references this. The distance between here and here is an offset, but the distance between there and there is not an offset because it's referencing the main line of tube or the main travel direction. It could be vertical, it could be horizontal. I've drawn it horizontal here. So we know that this distance is 150 mil. So if we use this calculation for 150 mil, it's going to say measure to 180. That would be incorrect. But what it gives me is a calculated gain of 3.1 millimetres. So I know that the cutoff length is actually 150, 150, take 3.1. So change that to zero, and it comes out with 147. So that length there is not 150, it's 147. I hope you all agree with me. If you need to go back and watch that section again, do so. It's very important that you get the differential between what is an offset and what is not an offset. Firmly in your mind so you don't make any mistakes. Now that we have both our marks on our tube, we can place it in the benders, make both our bends at 55 degrees. Line it up, line up the zero, make sure that's correct. Line up the mark. Now because we're using predictive offsets, and because you can use this calculation to actually work out all of the bends in a piece of tube before you place the benders on the tube, lining up and accuracy is very, very important. That's why I always use a felt tip pen That is very thin, as thin as a pencil, to try and get as much accuracy into the bends as possible. First bend is complete, looks good. Second bend, into the benders, line up the zero, line up my bend angle. Looks pretty good there. Sight it. Actually, it's pretty good there. Verify it. Place the bend. Measure the angle. That's to verify it. That looks good. Pick up my tube cutters, reduce the length of the tube on the mark, and just taking all this all in one shot, 
so you can see the whole process. Also being very gentle on my cutter disc. Make sure I don't wear it out. Okay, let's try this over on the board. Lining this up with our to scale drawing on the board. And it looks perfect. And that's how to do a predictive offset using the Handshiver Offset Calculator app. Now, I've shown you how to do a, uh, two offset calculations using both the simple and the predictive offset. But there's a third way to do this. A third calculation included in the app that can do all of this. Give you this length, that length, and that length all in one go. It's called the joint offset. So, we know that the length between that corner there and the start of our tube is 434 millimetres. So using the joint offset, we put in our angle of 55 degrees, we put in our reference length of 434, we put in our offset distance, 120, and we put in our before joint allowance, although it's not that in this case, it'll be this distance here, of 150 millimetres. If we click done, it gives us three results. On a straight length of tube, it tells me the first mark is at 200. So, 200 there. It tells me the second mark as 3, 4, 3. And the cutoff length is at 490. Now, you can already see that this distance in here is 143. And that verifies that our last uh, calculation was also correct. 200, 143. Remember that we put the position of the bends at those locations. So this is a third way of working out on a single straight length of tube before you've made any bends, the position marks for your offset. At this point here, you could trim it to seat firmly into a uh, terminator, or you can simply use that position as the reference point for further bends. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed this short video uh, with some tube bending demonstrations and proving of the hand tuber offset calculator app. Uh, if you like these videos, please like. If you really like them, please share. I'm sure there's somebody out there that does a bit of tube work that you know. And if you'd like to see more videos, then please subscribe to the channel on YouTube and they'll all be up there. Thank you very much for your time and your patience while I did this video. I hope it's not too long for you and we'll see you next time.